I'm Mrs. Burrows and it's reading time. Today, we're going to spend some time learning some new skills and sharpening up some old ones so that we can be good readers. Come on, let's begin. Today, we are going to learn more about making inferences. Here are your learning objectives. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to make inferences using clues from the pictures and text, locate and identify story details to make inferences, as well as explain which story details can be used to make inferences. Now, in our first lesson on making inferences, we learned that an inference is a guess that a good reader makes based on the evidence or clues from the pictures of text in addition to what you already know. That's important to remember because sometimes authors will not give all the information in the text. Good readers think to themselves while they are reading. What does this text tell me? Those are the clues. And what do I already know? When you put it together, you make an inference. Do you remember the pictures from our last lesson, boys and girls? Great. Remember how we use the clues in the pictures with what we already knew to make an inference? When we looked at our first picture, we inferred that the girls were at a party. In the second picture, we inferred that the students were going on a field trip. In the last picture, we inferred that the school was having sports day. Good job. You are on your way to becoming amazing readers. Now, sometimes boys and girls, when we look at the text or the words, we have to make an inference as well. Take a look at this. I need to go to the store and here is my shopping list. Can you read it with me? I need nails, a hammer, a wrench, a saw, and a screwdriver. Excellent reading, boys and girls. Now, let's make an inference of which store I can go to to purchase or buy these items on my shopping list. Remember, we have to use the clues that are in the words to help us, as well as what we already know in our heads. Here, we have a picture of John's shoe store, Super Value, and Kelly's. These are all stores in the Bahamas. I want you to think of the clues on my list as well as what you already know to tell me which one of these stores do I have to go to. I'll give you a few seconds. Remember, I need nails, a hammer, a wrench, a saw, and a screwdriver. Have you finished making your guess? Well, I'm thinking about the things that were on my list. I know that I go to Super Value to buy my groceries. And when I need shoes, slippers, or tennis, I go to John's for them. I also know that Kelly's is a store that sells building supplies. I bet you've already made your inference, boys and girls. And you're absolutely correct. Super Value won't have nails, hammers, wrenches, or screws. Hmm. John's only sells shoes and things for your feet, maybe bags, but not the tools that I'm looking for. You guessed it. 
I have to make a trip to Kelly's to get the things on my shopping list. Great inferencing, boys and girls. You use the information that you read on the shopping list plus what you already knew in your head to infer that I needed to go to Kelly's. Why don't we practice some more? Look at this short story. Let's read it together. Mummy asked her son Jamal to go to the store. He rode to the store. He had to pedal hard to get up the hill. It was easy to coast down the other side. Jamal went very fast. He had to use his brakes to stop. Now, boys and girls, what can I infer? What can you infer when you think about this, this story? Remember, we have to look in the story for our story detail. We are using the clues in the text as well as what we already know in our head to come up with a good inference or a guess. Now, let's look for the story details first. The first detail I saw was that it said, he rode to the store. Did you see another detail? Yes, he had to pedal hard to get up that hill. Another detail says, he had to use his brakes to stop. Did you see any more details there, boys and girls? I bet you did. Now, let's think about what we know in our head. I know that you can pedal a bicycle. I also know that you have brakes on cars and bicycles. I know that you don't need to pedal a car. I know that you use brakes on bicycles when you are going fast. Did you make your inference? Based on the clues, as well as what I already know, I am going to infer that yeah, Jamal rode his bicycle to the store. Awesome thinking, boys and girls. You put the clues with what you already knew in your head and you came up with a good guess or a good inference. Let's try another one. I'm going to give you some time to read this on your own. Pause the video and read this short story. Great reading, boys and girls. This time, I'm going to read this story with you. It's always a good idea to read things more than once. Let's begin. Rashad and Dad got up very early and headed downtown. As they got closer, they could hear the music. They could also hear the people chanting over and over, the saxes. At last, they could see the dancers in their colorful costumes. Excellent reading, boys and girls. Now, let's make our inference. We're going to find our clues. Let's look at the story one more time. Hmm, the first clue says, that they got up very early. The next clue I see is that they headed downtown. Do you see any more clues? Oh yeah, they could hear music. As well as they heard the people chanting over and over the Saxon. That's right, there's one more clue. They could see dancers in their colorful costumes. You guys are 
great at finding the story clues or the story details. Now, let's think about what we already know. Now, I know that some people get up very early to see Junkanoo. Hmm. I also know that Junkanoo is held downtown. Of course, I know that Junkanoo has lots of music. And I do know that the Saxons is a Junkanoo group. I know that dancers in Junkanoo wear colorful costumes. Have you made your inference, boys and girls? Have you put your story details together? along with what you already know. From the story, you can tell that. Rashad and his dad went to the Junkanoo Parade. Awesome thinking, boys and girls. You've made an excellent inference. Remember, when we make inferences, we make a guess that is based on evidence found in clues from the pictures or the text that we're reading, as well as using what we already know. Thank you boys and girls for joining our lesson today. I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. I hope you had an amazing time as we did our reading lesson today. Don't forget, to go on the website and find your assignments, your worksheets, your fun activities, and your online games so we can sharpen those skills as we become good readers. See you soon.